All right, thanks for staying with us. The political space in Nigeria is heating up as the 2019 general elections mm. draw near. Now, after former President Olusha Gobasanjo released his letter bomb to President Muhammad Buhari, where he addressed sundry issues and called on Nigerians to form a coalition, a third force that will upsurge the ruling All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party, Nigerians have been eagerly waiting for the political uh, party that represent just that. And over the weekend, founding members of the PDP led a mass exodus from the party after efforts to heal the wounds of the last national convention of the party hit the rocks. Now, ex-Information Minister Jerry Ghana, ex-Education Minister Tunde Adeniro, and ex-Niger Delta Minister Godstay Urubebe are moving to the Social Democratic Party which is merging with the People's Redemption Party, uh, the People's Salvation Party, PSP, uh, to form a formidable party ahead of next year's elections. Now, the political heavyweights are displeased with what they see as the hijack of the party by some state governors. Reports also suggest that the Olushago Basanjo inspired coalition for Nigeria movement is in talks with the SDP to work together. Is the SDP the much-awaited third force that will defeat the APC and the PDP in 2019 and birth a new Nigeria? That's a big question that uh, Nigerians are asking and also watching keenly to know how things are panning out and the permutations so far politically. Now, we yes. have in the studio uh, the executive uh, chairman of uh, the um, Committee for Protection of People's Mandate, Lagos, uh, Nelson Ekujumi with us right now. Nelson, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Nice to have you yeah. join us. It's a pleasure. Right. SDP seem to be coming on the news very prominently this, this past few weeks and all of that. But first of all, let me go back to personalities like Professor Jerry Ghana. He's not mm. someone from his political antecedents. He's not someone who jumps here and there. And this time for him to jump, it means there's a lot. or He, he tells a lot with the others? Well, uh, if Professor Jerry Ghana, I wouldn't know whether we should call him a political heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Because from our political history, I can't remember him contesting for any elective office. I, th I think he contested for president at the time. But I, mm -hmm. I remember him vividly well as uh, the, ch the chairman the of the... boss. Mamsa, Mamsa. boss. <laughs> you know, if you want to see it, see it well. Yeah, exactly. You know, and if you want stuff. to president, president, president well. well. Mm -hmm. I also remember <laughs> him as a, a member of a convention committee of the you know, ruling party then. Uh, looking at the caliber of these men, well, I think a lot of them are political heavyweights in the media. Olufalae, for example, who is the chairman of the party, former SGF? Yes, I remember Chief Olufalae, and uh, what some of the things we remember him for, even mm. now, is what makes one sad. You recollect, you know, he was alleged to have collected 100 million from the ex NSC. Well, allegations? Yeah, yeah allegations that even the Antigraph Agency came up with. It. But mm. be that as it may, we wait to see what weight these people can, you know, can pull. With the Nigerian people, because it is not enough to you know to for us to just bandy names that Mr. A or Chief X is going to party. Yeah, names like Tunde Adenero, former education. Let minister, us look at their Ulu antecedents. Agului, uh, uh, so for uh, me, a, a, a lot of them are the of them. Are, are men you know that politically, I don't think they are in. They're in, they are in tune with the grassroots. So, in other words, what you're saying, if I could read you correctly, is you know the question that was asked: Are you the savior, or should we expect <laughs> another? Should we wait for another? In in all seriousness, SDP, what they are saying is, we are the movement for a new political order, alongside other things that they say they're going to be looking at: issue of restructuring and and what have you. Well, it's uh, justice. Uh, humanity of Nigerians will be preserved, you know, and all of that. Well, like we say, easier mm. said than done. Mm. We have to look at the antecedents of these gentlemen and, you know, women in the party that is, you know, being, you know, bandied al around. That look, what have these people done? What is their pedigree? If it's the same people we knew yesterday, it's like putting an old wine in a mm. new bottle, in a new wine skin. So it makes no difference. When you say a thought force that, you know, and also 
I'm shocked that you know there is information that the, the Holy Church uh, coalition is in talks because we remember vividly well. He actually said if it's going to um, become a political party, party into a that will pull party, out. I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. yeah. So for them to be, you know, for them to be aligning tells you that you know one should be cautious of uh, their intentions. No, but the mm. point that is, in as much as the president said that. Being the third force to uh, determine who wins the next presidency, it still has to be by a political party one way or the other. Yes, but you and I know very well that as we sit down here, we have about 68 registered political parties. Mm. Still so counting. at least we have about 68 forces. I don't think we should be talking <laughs> about only the third force. Some of us are even worried that when elections are coming, or even after the elections, you yeah. don't get to hear of any of those parties except the two major parties and when elections are coming some of these parties what they do is that some of them have become business enterprise they adopt the candidates of other parties meanwhile the essence of a political party is to contest for elective office rather than adopting candidates of other parties so mm. it is not enough for some people to come together and tell us that look we are the savior no we, the people themselves must be ready to ask questions that, look, yesterday you were here, and while you were there, this what? is what transpired. Mm -hmm. So what's the You new can't just say because you have, you, know, you have put on a new garment. So things have changed. All, 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 all things, things have passed, passed away. away. Mm -hmm. No, definitely not. If, if truly uh, Nigerians are expecting a third force, what would you like to uh, be in that third force? A total departure from the past? Fresh well, blood? Well, realistically, yeah. let us be realistic with ourselves. Mm. A lot of the people coming out now to, you know, uh, pillar the existing uh, status quo yeah. is because they have been egged out politically and economically. When they return to the ship, and, you know, they are, they are in that ship that is on, on the waters, mm. you see that they will sing a different tune or they will keep moot. So what we should be looking at is asking basic questions. Like, what are those things that can make life mean? Whether you are whether you are restructuring Nigeria or you are put you are forming a new political party, the basic questions we should be asking: What is the roadmap to make life meaningful? But the point is, are Nigerians even informed enough to ask the right kind of questions and to make those demands of any political party that says we are the people who will change? The narrative. Well, far. you don't, you can't expect everybody to be informed, mm -hmm. but those who are informed owe it a responsibility to guide those who are not. That look, <coughs> these are the basic questions you should demand. These are the basic parameters. That look, what is your plan to provide electricity? What is your plan about security? What is your plan about the education? What is your plan about employment? It, it, those are the germane questions. Things that will make life meaningful for the average Nigerian, mm -hmm. not minding where you come from or where you reside. All right, N Nigerians, from, from comments from a lot of Niger spectrum of Nigerians, they seem to be, uh, they were obviously dissatisfied with the PDP, which made them change whatever led mm -hmm. to the change. And in 2015, a new political party came on board. But as it is right now, from the comments Nigerians are also making, it seems they are also dissatisfied with the, uh, uh, the, ruling, with the party. ruling party right now. So when we're looking forward to 2019 and looking forward to a new fresh air, fresh air and all of that, what kind of, what should be the ideals that one should look out for? Well, Beyond asking <coughs> those basic questions mm -hmm. of electricity, uh, road exactly. and, and what have you, those well, are the questions we've been I, I, I don't know what other I don't know what other ideals you'll be looking for because whoever comes on board today will also be a product of this same society where we have lost all our values, where, where somebody would, you know, uh, be going on the road and, you know, uh, there's a pedestrian bridge and you prefer to dash <laughs> across the road like an hyena, where... Or like a zebra. <laughs> or like a zebra. Like crossing a, a zebra yes. crossing without being I a zebra. The, the, the time has come for us, even when we are demanding all these uh, basic requirements from our leaders. To also do an introspection of ourselves. Because you, today, we'll talk about these issues, but tomorrow we behave as if 
we have learned nothing right. from yesterday. But, but fr from since 1999 until now, we have seen lots of political parties come, go, alignment, realignment, partnership, merging and all, merger and all of that. Are, are we still experimenting what our democracy should really mm. look like? Well, because our democracy is not that, you know, uh, matured enough, mm. I think it will not be out of place for us to continue along that path. Because one of the f one fact you can you, you you can take home is that you cannot predict what will happen when a man gets into office, and also a lot of us our expectations are beyond the ordinary. Because you must recognize the environment in which you are in, you must re recognize the complexities. Once we we place our expectations within those realistic parameters, mm -hmm. a lot of the disenchantment, the dissatisfaction, you know we. We took down a bit. We, what, we, what I believe we can do is that, look, this government, as of today, a lot, some people are dissatisfied with the present status quo. Not because the government is not putting it in, in, its best, but because their mind was already made up that, look, we've, our party has lost out all, the interest we represent is no more you know, favored, and we owe it a duty to continue to look for faults in the system. But what we can do is that if we are at the crossroad today, the most appropriate thing is to look for the way forward. It's like somebody... So what is the way, what is the way forward? The way forward is for us to set the agenda of what we want from whoever is coming to, to govern us come 2019. If it is the existing uh, political party in mm. power or the government in power, let us demand the scorecard. What were those things you, you promised us? How have you been able to meet up well, to Well, this it? government has been giving itself a pass mark, but that's even not the issue right now. The SDP, um, as well, they, they say they are the third force. <coughs> they are standing on MKO Abiola saying that this, they, what they believe is, you know, the, the things that MKO Abiola stood for, that he fought for, that unfortunately he lost his life over. And I'm reminded of those, you know, who came after Awolowo, who kept on saying, we are Awois. But in the course of time, you found that, you know, their integrity was questioned. Some yeah. people were like, look, Awolowo would not do what you are doing as a politician yeah, yes. and all of that. Yes, because, because those politicians are not Awolowo. The two persons cannot be the same. Yeah. What it requires of us is that, look, if you have told us you are, uh, following in the footsteps of uh, late chief of Bafe Maolo, what were those uh, things he stood for? Landmarks mm -hmm. that chief Maolo stood for. Let us use those uh, parameters at yardsticks for even uh, whipping them along the line. Because mm -hmm. a lot, some of them we don't know because they are, they are the ones who will be in office. We don't know may, maybe they want mm -hmm. to do that line, but there are some forces pulling them away. So it yeah. behoves on us, the people also, to also exert our own force to pull them back to those lines. That's why I said it is not about uh, somebody from, you were in party A today and tomorrow you say you are becoming a thought force. For, for, for some of us, it doesn't make any meaning. The, the other day when uh, uh, she Fulisha um, Gomba Sanjo made that remark, the question some of us ask is that what can you point as a role, uh, role model impact of she fully she on an average I've heard thing. some people say the kind of third force we actually envisage or look forward to is a third force that is made up of young, virile, you know, able bodied Nigerians who have what it takes the digital generation yes. and not the analog. Uh, generation, <laughs> uh, was it uh, OBJ? Or who, who he was. Who said, the, the digital Yahoo Yahoo Plus. Want, no, no, it was IBB actually who <laughs> said, we don't want analog anymore. Mm. It's time for the digital generation to take over. Well, Is that the kind of third force you want to see? Well, I, I, I don't want to place my expectations on such people who have not, you know, been saddled with responsibility. And when you talk, who have not been tried. At yeah, we have not been. Even some of them, they have been, They have had the opportunities, and they have not. You know, expl I ask, You know, when they when they say they use the youth, I ask them, where are they? which youths? We have interviewed some young people here who actually want to go for presidency. And when you listen to them, they're not just telling you about the problems that Nigeria has. Yes. They're actually proffering solutions. How many of them? Intelligently, how true. many of them do we have in their locality oh. who are members? 
of the CDA, the Community Development Association. How many of them do we have who are members of the security committee in their, in their local communities? Somebody will just, you know, it is only in Nigeria. And I find it very distasteful that somebody will just wake up. You have not made impact even within, within your own room, not to talk of your compound, and you are telling me you want to become pre president of where? Of a social club. So, so in that case, you don't believe in the, the youth that are coming up with yeah. all of this? I want to want see to. them in action. It's not only by mere word. We have passed the stage where we we'll put our destiny in the hands of... Many of them have run big companies, employing about 40, 50, 100... It's a different ballgame when it comes to politics. Not, how is it's it, a different how ball is it game. really different? You know the complexities of the Nigerian states? Yeah. That even some of the uh, principles, some of the ideals in an, in an, in an utopian situation mm. cannot work in this crime mm. because of certain interest. So, except we want to delude ourselves, I'm only, I'm very much interested in as much as I appreciate some of these youths who are, you know, showing this interest. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage them to try and take one of the, those before them as mentors and learn through the rope. Learn from the same people we say have taken Nigeria to a sorry pass. Well, uh, are those are people that are going the to people that have from? taken us to these sorry paths are also products and whatever they have done, some of us have also imbibed those, uh, uh, their footsteps. Hmm. So we need to, you know, have a cross mix whereby we need to sit down with them and, you know, cross fertilize hmm. ideas so that the, 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 the negative aspects, we put them aside. We take from the good. You can't tell me that all, all the people that have brought us to this uh, sorry state, that all they have done are the negatives. We have some positives to take home from whatever they have done because they are human beings. Mm. All right. Now, but but the, the issue there is going forward, especially looking at 2019, at this time when you listen to Nigerians speak, there's still the issue of uh, the North. There's still the issue of religion. There's still the issue of ethnic this yeah. and that. What really should be the message for 2019? What will make it significant and different? Well, the message for 2019 for some of us should be making life meaningful for mm. the every Nigerian, whether it be you from the north. Because one thing I know for sure is that the poverty ravaging the north is also ravaging the south. Poverty does not know tribe, age, or religion. And we also must recognize that, look, we human beings are one all over the world, whether it's as a Nigerian or somebody who is in diaspora. That the basic things about life is that man wants to live a life that you know he can plan ahead for the next day or tomorrow, mm -hmm. and not only a life of you know despair like we have here now. So it should not be about religion, it should not be about ethnicity. I know those are you know factors that it is very difficult for us to push them aside. All right, but well, we SDP, SDP is saying that they're going to focus on peace, security, and social justice, among so many other things. We'll have to mm. leave it there. Nelson Ekujimi, public affairs uh, commentator, and, of course, com of uh, the Committee for the Protection of the People's Mandate. Thank you for Thank joining you us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.